Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiff and today I'm going to be giving my seven tips on how to get a gel cast for your wavy or curly hair. Getting a gel cast has always been something easy for me and it helps prolong my days in between washing. So for today's video, I'm going to take you along on a typical wash day where I aim to get a hard cast. I'm also someone who never refreshes my wavy hair. <laughs> so I put in the extra time on wash day to get a strong cast so that I don't have to use that time to refresh on days two and three. Now, just a reminder that these are things I do for my hair, but that doesn't mean you have to do all of these tips and you definitely don't need to go out and buy more products. I'm also going to put my hair stats on the screen so that you can get an idea of how or why I like using certain products or techniques. I think these tips will be helpful for any hair type, but I always find it beneficial knowing the hair stats of others when I watch their videos and such. So if you are interested on how to get a strong gel cast and keep watching for my seven tips. For this wash day, I decided to go in with a curl cream because my aim is to create a strong cast. And this product offers some protein and hold while still being moisturizing. The more moisture, AKA water, you have in your hair, the more difficult it will be to get a cast. I'm then gonna follow up with a G Recoil Curl Activator just because I haven't used this product in a while. And to be honest, I forgot how much I liked it. <laughs> no need to co-wash, then condition, then apply leave-in, then a cream, then a moisturizing curl activator, then gel. That's too much. <laughs> There's a balance. Having textured hair means that moisturization is critical. However, you don't want to overdo it. This is probably the most obvious tip. <laughs> However, I have very fine hair, therefore I can't use products with heavy ingredients. But how heavy or light a product is doesn't necessarily affect the strength that product will have. Look for products labeled as firm or stronghold. They might weigh my hair down if I'm not careful, but if I do well, then I can get up to three days with no refreshing. Gels used to get a bad rep, but nowadays many gels that I purchase for wavy curly hair not only have have that same strong hold in order to get a cast, but they also include beneficial ingredients that will help to prevent your hair from drying out in between wash days. Okay, tip number three. This is one of my favorite tips. It's use film forming humectants to slow the rate of water loss and offer some hold. Film forming humectants form a light, semi-permeable layer around the hair to lock in moisture, which will help to decrease water loss until your next wash day. These humectants are typically plant gel extracts such as aloe vera, flaxseed, marshmallow root, slippery elm, okra, etc. But these film forming humectants are much gentler than than the stronger humectants that you often see and might deter away from, such as glycerin. These are very lightweight ingredients that have beneficial moisturizing properties while offering some hold so that you can still hydrate your hair without the need for heavier ingredients. Okay, tip number four, you better plop. <laughs> I'm talking about dry plopping. This is where you scrunch out the excess water with a cotton t-shirt or microfiber towel. Without this, my drying time would be ridiculously long and I doubt I would get a cast because like we learned earlier, the more moisture, AKA water we have, the more difficult it will be to get a cast. So once you're done applying your products, get as much water out as possible with as little of physical scrunching in order to deter frizz. This is the part of the process that I take pretty slow, but it is a critical step in my hair game. If you take anything away from this, then I hope it's plopping and it's so simple to do. So tip number five is use more gel, AKA use more product, AKA <laughs> it's okay to go a little heavy handed when it comes to gel on wet and damp hair. So I apply a good amount of gel on wet hair, then I will bob and then I will apply more gel to damp hair. And this is because if you want a stronger hold, then you need to use stronger products to offer that hold. But also you need to be a little more generous with your gel products. This all comes down to personal preference. However, 
However, applying products to wet hair will dilute the product. Also, plopping, while it will remove a lot of the water from your hair, it could also remove some of that gel product too. So just as a safety precaution, I apply a little more gel emulsified with a little water, or I use a gel with low viscosity so that it's not thick enough to disrupt anything. By applying a second round of gel to your damp hair, this will set your hair up for obtaining a nice solid cast. And I know it feels like a lot of product, but surprisingly, I haven't had too many issues with gel buildup in my hair. That doesn't mean it doesn't happen. I just find it much easier to go overboard with other products versus with gel. You can get away with being a little heavy handed with gel, so don't be afraid to experiment and use more. Tip number six, hairspray is your BFF. <laughs> I'm from the South, so I always loved hairspray, but I had to stop using it whenever I first began this method because it would just leave my dry hair crunchy, hard, and frizzy. And I'm the type of person that likes to run my hands through my hair, or I like to flip my hair from side to side, and hairspray just makes it too hard and stiff. But what I do now is I apply hairspray to my damp hair so that it gives it some of that extra hold. Just give it a try if you have some hairspray spray lying around. No need to go out and buy new products for this. All right, my last tip, tip number seven, do not touch your hair during the diffusing process. The more you touch your hair while it's drying, the more you break that cast. I have a very particular way of diffusing that I haven't fully shown on my YouTube channel before, but this is what I do. I will do a sort of hemic diffuse situation until my roots are dry and I see the cast beginning to form. And the reason I do this honestly is because while I do love the Black Orchid diffuser, that thing is heavy as heck. <laughs> I like to put effort into my hair and my appearance, but I am also so lazy. <laughs> so this is my way of getting the majority of my hair dry while still keeping it scrunched up so that the extra water weight and stuff like that won't be pulling my hair down. And then once my hair is about 60, 70% dry, I'll pick my head up from the towel and then I will go into more of a hover diffusing method. And then whenever my hair is almost fully dry, probably like 80, 90%, then I'll go in and scrunch diffuse. I diffuse to 100%, but some people People diffuse to 80 or 90 percent and then air dry the remaining amount of time. Do whatever you want. It's all personal preference. All right guys, so those are my seven tips. This is what my hair looks like after diffusing. And one thing to remember whenever you try to get a strong gel cast is to be careful during the scrunching process. With the gel cast, your hair might feel dry but it's actually a little wet on the inside. If you feel any really cold spots then that means your hair might still be a little bit damp and you should probably wait before scrunching it out. What I do first is I kind of clap out the cast. I don't hear about it too often, but it's really nice to do if you have such a strong cast where your hair is too hard to actually scrunch in a vertical motion. <laughs> and as you guys see here, I have one piece of hair that is still not fully dried. And so now I have to go back and diffuse just that piece alone. Story of my life, there's always that one piece that never wants to dry. <laughs> and another thing about scrunching out with a gel cast is that if you get a lot of gel around your roots, it's gonna take a little bit of extra mechanical work just to get all that gel cast off of your hair. Some people naturally get casts, whereas others don't. I get a cast very easily and I don't mind using more gel in order to do so, but the amount of product that I use, while might be enough for myself, might be too much or too little for someone else. You just have to take the time to experiment to see what works for you, even if that means you have a bad wash day. It's okay, it's normal. We will all learn to have great wash days together and through that there will be the bad wash days. <laughs> okay guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit that like button down below. Please subscribe to my channel to join this weird little world I have going on on YouTube. <laughs> and I hope you have a great rest of the day wherever you are in this world and I will talk to you later. Okay, bye.